Hello and welcome back to our tutorial about sculpting the demon. <laughs> okay, now let's get serious guys. Uh, basically, uh, what we're actually going to start off doing right now is getting the basic block of the actual shapes on the body. What I mean by that, uh, the actual layout, the pose, uh, in terms of uh, for us to actually comfortably sculpt everything we want to get into the character itself and actually concept it uh, from top to bottom. Now, I'm not the type who actually likes to start from the head and go down. I mean, I rather have a sphere instead of a head and actually block out the body at first <laughs> because uh, then I can actually give all the attention to the head itself. I mean, uh, let's agree, heads with bodies no not my style <laughs> okay so first of all what I want you to do is um, okay let's actually uh, do it fresh go to projects get a dynamesh sphere make sure make sure you go into geometry uh, make sure the dynamesh is on if it's off like this turn it on drop it to the lowest level, uh, control, hold and click on the viewport and drag. This will allow you to, just a second, this will allow you to basically uh, remesh the sphere itself, drop the resolution a bit and we're going to be able to continue. Okay. But it actually has a little bug from the start if you don't actually move it. Uh, it may not remesh, so make sure you move it a bit if it doesn't work after you do this. Uh, because you see the topology changes after you do this. But unless you actually move it, sometimes it doesn't really... Uh, it doesn't really... Um, remesh your actual mesh into a data mesh. Okay, a lot of meshes set there. Perfect. Let's turn off Polyframe for now and actually start with the body itself. Now, what do you think about when you actually think of sculpting a body? Uh, well, me personally, I think of somewhere around four heads tall with an S shape in the back, which instantly allows me to identify this as a body. Our demon is a male, so let's give him his package. And obviously, one big rule I want to all of you, well, I don't know uh, at what skill levels you're actually watching this at, but make sure not to actually sculpt only from one side. You're doing this three-dimensionally, so why would you just hold it like this, sculpt it, make it look perfect from the front, and not from here, right? So make sure to work around your model, even as uh, early as this. And let's try to get something interesting going here. Now, the hands I'm going to model separately, so let's do the torso first. And let's make sure that the silhouette we're getting, we're happy with. Now, it's okay to make mistakes in here. First of all, you're, you're actually concepting. You're not doing anything. I'm not even using a stylus at the moment. I'm simply using... Uh, a mouse simply because it's much faster for me if that makes sense and as I'm working along here uh, I'm actually looking at the reference which I have on my second monitor let me actually show you you'll also get these files uh, everything we've talked about everything I set up so uh, I'm going to go through that as well let me maximize my reference. Okay. Let's get a little bit of a neck going there. And make everything look even. Now, it's very tempting to go into details at this stage. But I recommend you not, because uh, when you're finished with it, you may not like the silhouette. You may not like the design. You may want to change something. And when you actually um, are trying to change something um, and you have a lot of detail, you're simply wasting time. I believe that's, for, that's a no-brainer, right? Let's remesh again. 
Now you can see that this is nothing too special. We're just sculpting. <coughs> Sorry for the cough. We're just sculpting exactly like we would actually attempt to sculpt a human torso. Now let's actually let's actually get the hands going. Just actually let's add the head in first. Well, um, this is not pre-recorded, guys. Uh, we we're actually sculpting uh, live right now. So forgive me if I'm actually not very decisive because we're actually designing as we speak and we have to get something out of this. So uh, let's actually drop the resolution on this guy first. Dynamesh it, go to geometry. You see Dynamesh is turned off. Drop resolution, Dynamesh, boom, easy. Now what we will do with this is, let's actually use the reference from here. Let's look at this and let's do this shape as a temporary one. So we know we're looking at a demon when we actually uh, glaze up on it. Maximize. Okay. So you can see I had symmetry turned off in here. Press X to activate symmetry. And what I want to do is I want to cut. Control Shift. You can see this changed. Click on this while still holding it or else it won't work. And select Clip Curve. Now when we select Clip Curve and we, we press and control shift again, uh, we will see this little line as we're holding these two buttons. Now, the shadow side should be away from the part you actually want to cut off. You can move it like this with space. And when you let go of the mouse button, boom, you cut it off very fast way to start sketching in the planes of the face itself. And what other things we can do is if we double tap on alt, it'll give us a sharp corner and we can actually cut like this as well. Now let's get the move brush and move everything in place. I want to make the chin. Now I'm not using the smooth brush on purpose at the moment because we should not be worried about those kind of things at the moment. Again, we're just sketching. We can always change anything we want. We can always move, modify. That's the beauty of actually creating something from zero. You're not constricted to a concept. Now, I found that if I make the heads smaller on creatures such as these, they look a bit more effective. Uh, big body, small head, big horns. Love that. Uh, you're asking for a good silhouette. <laughs> okay. Now what we can actually do is get clay build up and maybe get in some of the shapes in the face itself with a very low intensity because we have a low resolution. We don't want to get rid of too much. Let's fix the orientation here. For that I'm going to use the move brush. If we press Alt and move, we can just extrude on a local normal. Now, what I'm actually thinking about is whether is whether is his uh, neck too long, uh, maybe his head is too small and just playing around with proportions and the looks that I'm actually getting. Maybe move the head a bit closer to the body and make the neck shorter to make uh, this guy look a little bit more frightening and muscular 
even though he may have a much thinner body then uh, basically it's all about how big he looks not how big he really is in terms of muscle mass when we're actually sculpting uh, unless you actually want to make him uh, buffed out uh, Ronnie Coleman type stuff <laughs> okay so let's actually do a clay build up and get the landmarks for the anatomy uh, best way to actually get something going now what I usually do is I find his trapezius muscles which are here I find the chromium process which is a bone at the top of the deltoid muscles and we go back like this to indicate the scapula and of course a big cut in between don't worry if it's not clean enough we're just we're just playing around here and here we'll actually see the uh, starts of the iliac spines iliac spines are basically thin bones extruding from the pelvis itself which give us this line here and there's a muscle going over it from the oblique region Now, if uh, you guys don't catch some of the details I'm actually doing here, uh, I can actually, uh, we're going to be able to contact each other either through WhatsApp or anywhere else uh, if you have any questions or you would ha like anything to be explained in greater detail, of course. Uh, I'll be more than glad even to record an actual little video for you. Now you can see that I'm not that worried about proportions because usually when I'm uh, doing a figure sculpt or something like that I usually uh, measure everything especially if I have measurements from the model itself and take that into consideration but right now again we're just playing with proportions just trying to hit that realistic point in the anatomy of this creature and uh, grow from there to play around now I'm indicating the rib cage itself and you can see that I'm just uh, I'm not sculpting every single individual rib we're just going in and indicating that it's just there just the plane changes And now everybody's favorite muscles. Now you can see that I've actually done uh, the rib cage and I'm building the muscles on top of it, even though we're at a very low resolution. This will actually give you good plane changes when you'll actually move up resolutions. And right now we're, I'm just doing a four pack not a six pack because the usually way I sculpt is that most of the people don't actually have uh, exact num exactly six uh, exactly six uh, uh, quads in here uh, it's usually a four pack and the 40 ounce muscle here is actually cut in half um, well visually only and it appears uh, sometimes that there is a six pack present when this muscle itself is overdeveloped uh, but uh, there are people who actually do have a little extra uh, a little extra muscle in there uh, right above or beneath the rib cage itself depending on how they actually developed uh, but usually if it's below the rib cage it's a bodybuilder who actually tore this muscle <laughs> okay now let's go to the move brush and make sure that we don't lose control over the form. 
that's also very important in terms of uh, sculpting consistently and getting the result you like and you want. Okay, now let's give a little, mo little bit more attention to the face itself to get the character in this character as soon as possible. Now I know I want a demonic-ish jaw, kind of very thin teeth, maybe no eyes, but I do want eyes. But if we won't give him eyes, um, maybe we're going to get a better, uh, how do you put it, more cold out of the image we actually make. But let's test it with the eyes. We can always make two pairs of heads. And whichever one looks good, that one is going to stay. We are the boss in here. We design it as we wish. And I'd like to make the head a bit more small, a bit smaller and move it back a bit. Now, I encourage you to follow along if uh, you're quite new or intermediate and you're not, not here just to actually see the workflow. And if you want to grasp a few things, I advise to do the project because uh, I'm actually talking about every little detail I'm actually doing. And it's not going to be that hard. Well, of course, if you're uh, not that experienced in doing likeness, um, don't... Uh, don't try to copy the exact same details over. It's simply not going to work because this is a quite a free form way of sculpting, but maybe you're already very talented. Who knows? You may be able to copy the exact same thing I'm doing or even better. Who knows? <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's going to come down to how much time you actually want to put into this uh, as a final piece itself. Maybe we get a more pronounced rib cage and a little bit of a stretch, a muscle stretching going on here. Uh, it's all about what you think and all about what you want to achieve. Now let's extrude the hands from here and we'll detach them later for now. And let's get a M pose going here. Okay, perfect. Let's go to clay tubes. And I like to use clay tubes with this alpha and start building up the deltoid muscles themselves. Now here we have a little muscle called Terrace Major and there's also Terrace Minor right underneath this one but we don't need it at the moment. I'm only going to put in the muscles that change the planes and break up the surface at the moment. Now the medial head of the deltoid which is a three-headed muscle sits directly on the scapula, the shoulder blade. And right here, we actually have the trapezius muscle, which looks quite like a diamond. And in here, we have the seventh vertebrae, seventh cervical vertebrae or something like that. I'm really bad with those names, but I think it's the correct, uh, correct name for it. Seventh cervical 
vertebrae. Yes, that's it. Now we're actually putting in the clavicle, the S-shaped muscle. Not very apparent on our low resolution, but believe me, this is going to pay off. Let's bring the chest a bit closer, maybe smooth it a bit, and let's use the standard brush to bring back that little detail in. Uh, also there is going to be a point where we're going to work without symmetry on the body, and that's also a lot of fun. To actually get you through it all. Okay, perfect. Okay, now hands are coming in as well. Let's make sure that the armpits look reasonable, acceptable, and not like huge blobs. And let's make sure that the overall silhouette itself is visible on the torso. But right now what I don't like is that I want a more thin, thin build than it is in here. So he doesn't look too aggressive. Well, that's more like it, but I don't want to go into uh, too much of a Darksiders vibe. If you play Darksiders, I mean, it's an amazing game. And you can actually see uh, in the first and the second game exactly what I'm talking about in terms of being aggressive and uh, body shapes. Even though both of the characters in Darksiders 2 are very muscular, um, uh, War looks and feels more like a tank and Death feels more like a feather. Uh, even though they're both very muscular. So, looking at him, you could say that war is slower and death is faster. Let's take the standard brush and put in the tricep. Now tricep is called tricep because obviously it has three heads. That's one head, this third head, and I'm sorry, this is the third head. <laughs> now we get a bone from here. Let's make sure we get the bony landmarks down. Make the armpit, armpit deeper and of course uh, we need the chest to go and connect straight here. No, okay. And 
let's go to the clay brush. Okay, let's work a little bit more on the head and we're going to be done for this uh, video. Go grab a coffee after this uh, so you don't fall asleep if you're doing this straight away. And for this, let's do like, let's actually append, let's actually append a sphere. Get the polysphere, go into geometry, just move it for now. Again, make it smaller. Select it, go back to geometry, turn on Dynamesh at a very low level. And let's do it like this instead of scaling. Let's do a sculpt the approach to it. Move it, Dynamesh it. Let's start off creating the actual horns. Now horns and a demon, it's very important because it's what it, it, it can actually give or take a character out of your demon. Now, what I would usually do, I would actually shape it, let's say, from the front first. Now keep in mind that jagger lines will make him look more aggressive, smoother lines, maybe a bit more calm, developed. And let's not forget, I'm trying to make a killer musician in here. He's going to have something like a harp that actually kills people or takes their souls. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> Okay, on this, I believe I'm ready to go to at least 16. Enter, control, drag, up res. If we press M and V, this will give us the move brush. Okay. And if we want to mirror this on the other side so we can actually work simultaneously, what we can actually do is go into Z plugins, go to Sub Tool Master, press on mirror, select X, and OK. Now we have two horns. Now, what I want to do is uh, move the horn itself a little bit back, but make the base stay somewhat in front of the face and maybe make its base a bit thicker for it to actually cover more ground on the head and make the actual incision points curvier and thinner there. So it looks more complicated, looks more interesting, curves a bit more. Okay, we didn't have symmetry on, so let's do it like this. Sometimes this happens. And what we can actually do is you can see that uh, these are two polygroups. We can go to polygroups, add a group, control shift, click on this one, click on it again, 
uh, because this one is the one I want to keep. It's going to disappear, going to geometry, uh, modify topology, and uh, delete hidden. And right now, if we control shift click, nothing appears because the object itself is deleted. We know that we edited this, so we can go into the plugins again. Just a little interesting tip because you are going to make a mistake one way or another. And uh, you know, you have to know how to fix it. Don't forget to press your X. <laughs> this already gives us quite a silhouette uh, because of the horns only so you must you can imagine how much we can actually achieve after we've uh, done the props done the legs everything else the body uh, layers on top of layers uh, bone and uh, basically <laughs> um, muscle on top of bone skin on top of muscle more skin on top of muscle burn muscle burn skin, everything. We'll get there. Um, thank you for being with me in this tutorial. Uh, see you in the next one.